Hey, Maureen. Hello, Julia. Looks like my video is not working, so I'm going to leave and come back. Good morning. I am messing with the lighting. Morning. I still feel like there's this huge bright hot spot on my forehead from the overhead light. <laughs> but unless I turn it off, it. then it's super dark. <laughs> it's good lighting on me, but how's the red, but still kind of harsh. Yeah, it's like there's a big light coming in from outside that's. Yeah, it is. It's the backlight. I need to get a warmer bulb in this overhead is the situation. So people are just going to have to live with me having kind of a halo right. on the top of my head. It's just it's appropriate for a religious <laughs> leader. I think it's because before I'm sitting more directly underneath it. And before when I was um, sitting, I guess I could sit back further. Does that look better? A little better, yeah. I'm not frame wise is it better to have me like here yeah, i like yes. you a little closer but. yeah mm -hmm. a little far away from everybody okay good morning everybody good morning. Morning. that morning was here and she had to leave and then she's coming back um so she should be back in just a second so, okay i'm gonna go grab the order of service great so everybody got the order of service yes and we have a, a lot of slides, nothing that I think is complicated, just we yeah. just have a lot of slides. It's a beast. <laughs> it's kind of a slide beast this morning. <laughs> yeah, I went through it um, on my own just a little bit ago. <laughs> Here, I love your sunflower. Yeah. They finally bloomed. It, I started, I planted these giant ones at the near the beginning of the pandemic and uh they just like kept growing and growing and growing and then finally just this week flowers maybe it's a good omen how's the how's like the framing of this i always have that like do i catch that other window like that or do i leave it kind of out I, I yeah like I, I like it without the other window personally yeah. sorry Me yeah too. okay <laughs> And then zhuzh up our also a little bit, but it also the says basics. It's, it's recording right now. I don't know if you want to be recording this. Uh, um, Julie, would you make me host? Oh, yes, I can. I can definitely make you host. I need a second cup of coffee is the truth of the matter. Oh. <laughs> I just grabbed one. <laughs> Got one down, but I, I need another. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can add some fill light here.
Good morning, everyone. It's so wonderful to see you all gathering here. Good morning, Catherine waving hello and Diana waving hello, Maxine and Sandy and Joni. Oh, it's good to see you all gathering here, getting ready for our In Gathering Sunday. Welcome one and all. Uh, this is a time if you want to move into gallery view, you know, use that button on the corner of your Zoom screen on the upper right hand corner for most of us. And uh, you can see all the faces of folks as we gather in our virtual sanctuary. Um, you can scroll through using that little blue arrow on the side. So if you want to say hello and see people as they arrive into this space, go ahead and you can wave and say hi. You can always say hi in the chat as well during this time. Um, Maureen is in our chat here in Zoom. Uh, Maureen Claffey, our Director of Congregational Life, so she can answer any questions you might have uh, and say hello. And Eden, if you're joining us on Facebook, Eden is with you in the comments on Facebook, so feel free to say hello, hello to each other there as well. And uh, just gather yourselves. If you don't have any water, if you don't have a cup of water with you this morning, now is a really good time to go grab a cup of water. And if you have an empty bowl and a towel, those are also going to be useful. But really, all you need is some sort of vessel containing water. Um, and a towel is optional. And another empty bowl uh, is optional as well. So this is a good time to gather those items. If you have a candle or a chalice that you want to light along with us this morning, this is a good time to get set uh, with that. Don't forget the matches, unless you're using an electric candle, in which case you're all set. Um, it's good to be gathering this morning. It's good to be together. Come on in. We're going to be getting started in just a few moments. This is sort of our our virtual narthex, right? Narthex is that fancy term for lobby in a church or a congregation or a religious building, right? We can't just call it a lobby. We have to come up with a special uh, liturgical term, the narthex. This is our virtual narthex. Um, so just if you can imagine, if you've been to um, our building, if you can imagine kind of that moment where we're walking in from our morning, passing through, saying hello on the front steps, um, perhaps taking a glimpse of Alice Keck Park Memorial Gardens across the street. It's such a lovely view from the front doors of our building. And if you haven't gathered with us in person, welcome. We hope to see you uh, one day in our building, hopefully. Uh, and we are gathering here in this virtual space in the meantime. So it's good to get to know those of you who are new to this community. We welcome you as well. Um, welcome, everyone. Go ahead and get settled wherever you are gather your water. Uh, I've reminded some folks already, but if you need to get a glass of water, this is our gathering of the waters, our blessing of the waters, which we're going to be doing in a little bit of a different way, just like we're doing everything a little bit differently. Right now, um, we are going to be celebrating our in-gathering service uh, in a special way this morning, um, together in this virtual space, even though we are physically apart. So take a moment and get settled. Have one last sip of your cup of coffee. And we're going to get started here in just a moment. It's so lovely to see everyone. I'm going to scroll through and say hi. And of course, if you want to keep your camera off, that is always an option. We are just glad you're here, whether you've got your camera on or off. Um, however, wherever you are, uh, we're really glad you're here. So just make yourself comfortable. Say hello. Sit in your jammies with the camera off and letting the sound wash over you. Um, eating breakfast, wherever you are right now. We're glad you're here. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with our service. morning with these opening words by the Reverend Angela Herrera. Consider this an invitation to you. Yes, you. With all your happiness and your burdens, your hopes and regrets. An invitation if you feel good today and an invitation if you do not. If you are aching and there are so many ways to ache. Maybe your heart is heavy or hardened. 
Maybe it's troubled and peace can take up residence only in a small corner, only on the edge with all that is going on in the world and in your life. Ni modo, it doesn't matter. All that you need for a deep and comforting peace to grow lies within you. Once it is in your heart, let it spread into your life. Let it pour from your life into the world. And once it is in the world, let it shine upon all beings. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Society of Santa Barbara. Welcome to this loving community of seekers striving to live with integrity, nurture wonder, and inspire the actions that transform us and transform the world. I'm the Reverend Julia Hamilton, and I am joined this morning by Kier Zecker, one of our Worship Arts team members, by Maureen Claffey in our on our chat here on our Zoom sanctuary and by Eden Kennedy in our comment section on our Facebook live stream. Uh, Aaron Wilson is behind the scenes helping all of this run. And of course, joined by all of you, all of you who've taken this time to gather, to set aside this hour to deepen and refresh and renew your spirits in these hard and challenging times. It's good to have visitors, the newcomers here with us on Sunday. A special welcome to all of you. We have a link to a guest book in the chat. And if you want to go ahead and click on that link or save that link, um, that's how we can know how to get in touch with you and keep you updated on what's going on in the life of the congregation and help connect you to this community. It can be a challenging time to get connected to a virtual community and meet folks online. So um, I encourage you to let us know how to reach out and stick around for our time of social hour and coffee hour immediately following the service. We would love to meet you and be able to talk more personally. If you haven't brought your cup of water, this is a good time to make sure you have some water with you here this morning for, your, for this in-gathering service. Um, and I wanna highlight a couple of things that are coming up as we kick off this new season, this unique season in the life of this congregation. Um, this Tuesday, as part of our in-gathering, I'm really thinking of this more as an in-gathering week than an in-gathering moment, right? We're beginning to turn toward this new season. We're here this morning, but on Tuesday evening, I'm going to invite you to join us for a very special live sound meditation. This is something that is crafted for our community, for our Unitarian Society community and anyone who would like to join in. So feel free to share the link with friends and family. And it's crafted for us because we are going into this in-gathering with our hearts heavy, with loss, I know that I am holding very closely Ken Riles, our choir director, who we lost just a few weeks ago and who I am feeling very much today with us in spirit um, as we gather um, and also feeling the absence of him as we gather this morning. So in this personal grief that lives here in this community and in this collective struggle that we are holding in the world, this sound meditation Tuesday night is going to be a time to lie down and let uh, the sound wash over you and bring you hopefully to a place where you can find some peace and perhaps some healing uh, for all that is going on. So if you need help getting connected to that, you should have the link in your email. If you don't, uh, email the office and we'll make sure you can participate. Get some good speakers going on too, or a good set of headphones. Uh, we are launching our new year of religious education for our kids, reimagining how we do that, but we're really excited to be able to invite our kids and families to a safe and very socially distanced bottle rocket launch at the beach this afternoon. At two o'clock, we're going to be gathering with our kids to uh, make and launch bottle rockets using baking soda and vinegar um, to launch a new year and to be able to at least wave to each other and send air hugs um, at the beach at two o'clock. And there's a juice hour after services for anybody with families and kids who wants to get connected. There's a link to that in the service. And you can talk to Janie or Christina, our religious education co-coordinators. On September 22nd, we're going to be um, supporting an online screening of uh, uh, something called Documenting the Undocumented. 
It's in support of the 805 and DocuFund. It's an opportunity to hear stories of people here in our Santa Barbara community um, and their struggles during this time. Because of course, if you are undocumented, you don't have access to a lot of the aid and support that the rest of us do. Uh, and so this is to help remember that all of us are in this community together and what affects one of us affects all of us. So we can be with our undocumented friends and neighbors on September 22nd. We're taking donations for our annual auction, which is happening in October. So if you have any questions, you can talk to Aaron or any member of our fabulous auction team. And then the last thing I want to um, remind everyone, which is an important thing, is that our connection circles are going to be beginning again uh, this fall. And Carol Schwitzer, who's one of our connection circle coordinators, has a special invitation for you all. Good morning, I'm Carol Schwitzer, and I'm here to welcome you to join a Connection Circle starting in October. Connection Circles, as most of you know, are small facilitated groups of people who meet to share about what matters in their lives. I like to mention three good things about Connection Circles, three of the many good things. First, you get to know people, it's great for new people or anyone who wants to deepen their connection here. Second, you get to learn and practice a new way of being together, a way that forms a great space for people to uh, open up. And three, uh, you form trust and connections in your circle that are valuable to you, but also valuable by weaving the congregation more closely together. Um, so those are three good things about connection circles. I also want to think for a minute about what we rest on because the connection circles exist within the circle of our congregation, which is already a circle of trust. And we exist within that because of the work of our wonderful staff who have made this unbelievable transition from us being together in person to being together virtually. Uh, they're making it all all work and I, I'm so grateful and I think we all are and our fabulous facilitators who've also made this transition and have learned new skills and ways of a uh, new way to, to be together uh, all of these things are in place and we're fortunate to have all that and we're ready to go so uh, our connection circles had been 16 meeting sessions we're now experimenting with eight meeting sessions. So since they're twice a month, you will be a meeting for four months, eight different meetings. You can sign up online and I'd like to offer to, for you to email or call me, I'd be glad to help you in any way I can to know about and perhaps join a connection circle. We'd love to have you join a connection circle. Thank you. I invite you now to take a breath, to settle yourself wherever you are, to recognize that it is a sanctuary wherever you are. And as we ring our bell, let the sound connect us. Now is the time for lighting our chalice. So wherever you are, if you want to type into the chat or the comments, chalice is lit and put the name of the street or wherever you're coming from, your town, so that we can see these chalice flames kindling all across our community, knowing that there are flames being kindled all over the world as Unitarian Universalist communities gather once again. So type in chalice is lit and Kier Zecker is going to light our communal chalice for us this morning. With a yellowish glow and smell of smoke in the air, we light the flame on our communal chalice to remind us of the strength we have to hold compassion, sorrow, empathy, and tenderness through the fullness of life's experiences. 
and to bring the fire of our love and commitment to creating a better world into this sacred space we're making now together. Thank you, Kier. We have another flame to kindle this morning, and that is our candle of memory for Bob Herrick. Bob and Lois joined this congregation about two years ago and immediately jumped in with their full hearts and minds, got to know us, became beloved members of this community very quickly. And Bob's loss last Saturday was sudden. And I would like to invite us all to take a moment to hold Bob in our hearts, to reach out with love and compassion to Lois in her grief, to hold his family in the care of this community and to remember that we rest on the shoulders of those who have come before us, who have made their home here with us for a time. So let us take a moment in silence to remember Bob and all of those whose spirits are with us. Blessings on your journey, Bob. We move this morning a community holding both grief and joy, holding that tension, that dynamic balancing act of living, knowing that we move through difficult times and seeking, yearning for those bright spots where we can find them. And so as we do every Sunday, I invite you all to lift up those joys that you have found in the world, put them into our virtual good things jar, share with us where you have grown, where you have learned something that has kindled that spark in your life so that we may uh, share in that joy with you and go ahead and type that into the chat or type it into the comment section on Facebook. And the joy that I have for us all, the collective good thing that I want to hold is something that is happening in the physical space of our sanctuary. Um, we have put up some beautiful new welcoming banners. Uh, here on the front, if you drive by, you'll see that we have um, shouted out our invitation to the world to join us, um, to try to connect to our community, even though we are not in the physical space of our sanctuary, uh, we want to make sure people know that we are still uh, gathering here for support and connection and care and love and justice work in our community. And these two banners are hanging on the front, but over on the side, I am thrilled to announce that we have a beautiful Black Lives Matter banner that we are hanging to proclaim our commitment to supporting the movement for Black Lives and that we will not allow this to fade away. As we move through the coming months, we will continue to do work of dismantling uh, racism, uh, understanding how white supremacy moves in our society uh, and building a more beloved world where everyone can thrive and survive. Um, and so next Sunday, we are going to do a blessing for our Black Lives Matter banner. So please join us next Sunday uh, to bless this work and reconfirm our commitment to living our values in the world. Thank you to everyone who is doing this work and making this possible. I invite you now to join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation to get in touch with your breath to settle yourself, feel your body, perhaps look around, look away from the screen and take in your surroundings. Remember that you are a body in space and enter into this time to practice compassion and cultivate an expansive heart. As we move into this time of prayer and reflection, let us bring into our circle of care all of those who are seeking shelter from the fire and smoke those first responders and firefighters who run towards what everyone else is running from. Let us hold all of those who have lost loved ones and homes and livelihoods and those who are still wondering if at the end of today their house will still be standing. May cool weather and rain uh, come swiftly to quench the flames. 
Let us bring into our hearts and minds all who are in harm's way and need a place of safety and rest. May everyone find the shelter they need. Let us expand compassion to all who are grieving, all who are feeling the pain of absence and loss during this already difficult time. May there be comfort and companionship for all of us in the midst of grief. And finally, let us extend compassion to ourselves, knowing that compassion for others must be grounded in care for what is within as well as what is without. So breathe in, beloveds, knowing that there is suffering in the world, and breathe out, knowing that love moves through it all, like water cutting a canyon through rock. Let us enter into a time of quiet together. This morning, I am thrilled to bring back some more music from Leah Morris, who is, um, those of you who joined us last Sunday, got a little glimpse into the work and music that Leah is creating the, during these days. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be able to share some more of that music with us. When peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll share with you this morning. It's a story from the Sufi tradition and the Sufis are a branch of the Islamic tradition that often use storytelling as a way of communicating wisdom, recognizing that stories aren't just for kids but for people of all ages. Once there was a little stream that dreamed of flowing to the sea. The stream started in an aquifer, a huge pool of underground water until one day the stream pushed its way up through the nooks and the cracks, up through the earth, until it burst forth into the sunlight and began its journey down the mountainside. At first it didn't know where it was going. As its waters bubbled to the surface, they ran down the hill, carving the stream bed into the earth. Sometimes the stream babbled as it traveled. Sometimes it gurgled. Sometimes it roared. At times the stream traveled alone until one day a longing began to grow and it began to feel a pull toward the sea. Its waters were so clear you could see the pebbles that lined its bed. 
At other times, the stream ran through great lakes or tumbled over a cliff or joined other streams to form a river and then split again to travel alone. But always, always the little stream yearned to flow into the sea. Sometimes the stream would run fast and deep and fish swam in its waters as it carried them swiftly on its journey. Sometimes the stream would grow wide and slow and it would carry boats on its back as it continued its journey. Until one day, the stream found itself growing sluggish. Its waters grew thick with mud until it pooled into a brackish bog right at the very edge of a vast desert. It tried throwing itself across the desert, but it just sank into the sands. It tried going around the desert, but the sands were too wide. It tried going under the desert, but the sands were too deep. And still the little stream felt the call of the ocean and yearned to flow to the sea, which it knew must be on the other side of these burning sands. After what seemed like a long time, as the stream just pooled there, sitting in the sun, it began to hear a voice. I can take you to the sea, little stream, whispered the wind. Come with me, I'll carry you to the other side of this desert. How can you do that, scoffed the stream. You are only made of air. I can carry you on a breeze, whispered the stream, whispered the wind but you must be very brave for you must let go of yourself and change. How do I know what you're telling me is true? Asked the stream. How do I know that I'll make it to the ocean? You must trust me, said the wind, or you can stay here stuck in a muddy pool going nowhere. At first the little stream was scared, but it let go and the wind picked it up particle by particle. And the little stream felt lost because it was no longer a stream. It had been turned inside out and upside down and had become moisture swirling in the sky until it relaxed into the arms of the wind. And in this way, the wind carried the stream across the desert until it reached the other side. And there the stream felt a gentle tug, a gathering weight, and it felt itself falling and falling. And the pieces of itself came together again as rain until it rolled down the mountainside once more a stream rushing and tumbling again until it rolled into the sea where the waves pushed it and pulled it forward and the currents carried it far out into the vastness of the ocean. And the little stream was content to be one with the waters of the world. But I understand that every now and then the wind would breeze by whispering across the currents of the sea, come with me, come with me. And the moisture would rise up into the wind and be carried up, up far into the sky and blow over the land to distant mountains and start its journey all over again. So ends our story for this morning. I invite you to listen to this next song, let it wash over you and um, listen to it, remembering that we are gonna be coming back to sing it together later on in the service. Keep your heart wide open Though the waves wanna push you around Mm, you gotta keep your heart wide open Till your faith brings you back to solid ground mm, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep my heart I'm gonna keep wide open I'm gonna keep my heart 
wide, wide open. Though these waves wanna pull me around, though the waves wanna push me around, though the waves wanna push me around, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep my heart, I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Till my faith brings me back, brings me back to solid ground. Until my faith brings me back to solid ground. We gotta keep, we gotta keep our hearts, our hearts, we gotta keep our hearts, we gotta keep our hearts wide open. Though these waves wanna pull us around, though these waves wanna pull us around, we gotta keep, we gotta keep our hearts, we gotta keep wide open. Brings us back to solid ground. Say hi. Hi. Normally when we celebrate our in-gathering, we celebrate the coming together of our community to start off the beginning of a new year in the life of the congregation. The fall brings with it the start of so many things, the start of a new religious education program year for our youth, new opportunities to get involved in justice work and small groups like connection circles, opportunities to take a class or cook up something for a potluck and generally get excited about the turning of the seasons. But this year, as with all things, it's a little different. This year, we are a gathered community online without the physical space of the sanctuary to welcome us in and hold us together. Usually we begin the year with a kind of homecoming, a welcoming ritual that symbolizes the gathering of this community by pouring water into a common bowl. Just as many drops come together to form the ocean. This is a ritual practice that many Unitarian Universalist congregations all over our country celebrate at this time of year. But this year, we must learn to make a sanctuary space for ourselves wherever we are. So I ask you, do you have a place in your house, in your space, set aside for a spiritual purpose? A meditation corner, an altar, a shelf where you might keep objects that are meaningful to you. If you have a space like this, this is a good time of year, perhaps to give that corner of your life a little love and attention, to dust it off, to wipe down the glass on the picture frame, to put a new tea light in the candle. And if you haven't created such a space in your life, today I am encouraging you to do so. I have always been an altar builder. It's something in my nature ever since I was a kid. I think most kids are natural altar builders, actually. Collections of rocks from the beach on top of their dresser, perhaps a shelf of stuffed animals arranged just so. Photographs of family and friends pinned to their bulletin board or a shrine to a favorite musician. If you go into any kid's room, you will probably see some kind of altar somewhere. When I was growing up, I had a little curio shelf where I collected special things. A glass bird from my grandmother, a little clear bottle of semi-precious stones, a small statue of the Buddha, a candle, a peacock feather I had found. And some of these things I still have on my altar even now. And you can see behind me on this wall, this altar is a kind of a backdrop for our services holding the space behind the chalice. It's got photographs and mementos now from not just me, but from the lives of all three of us in my household. Physical reminders of where we've been as well as things that speak to what we value and how we want to be. I think this is one of the things that separates an altar space from just a collection of knickknacks. An altar speaks to the future as well as the past. It is aspirational as well as a home for cherished memories. An altar, I think, is a way of keeping myself accountable. 
accountable to my ancestors who I have represented there, accountable to the relationships that are important to me, and accountable to the kind of person I hope to become and the kind of world that I hope to build for future generations. Not every person is going to be an altar builder, of course. Some people create sacred space in many different ways. A spot with a view, perhaps, where you can sit in meditation or contemplation. A place cleared of clutter away from the TV or the computer, where the spirit has a little space to breathe. Some place outdoors, perhaps, a favorite bench or garden chair, where you can feel connected to the earth, and all living things. These are all sacred spaces that you might find or create for yourself. In this time at home, we've been forced to take a new look at our surroundings. Last Sunday, we showed pictures of all the places in our homes where we work and go to school. This pandemic has brought new life into our kitchens, experimenting with baking bread and new recipes, perhaps. Perhaps our gardens are being tended more carefully Perhaps our pets are getting some extra love and a new doggy bed or a scratching post. We carve out spaces in our homes for work and play and rest. But this morning, I'm inviting you to carve out a space for spiritual growth and deepening too. If you can't come into the sanctuary, you will have to find ways of bringing the sanctuary home to you. And it takes a bit of intention to make this happen. Sacred space is rarely accidental. It's worth putting some thought into. What do you value? And how will you represent that in the place where you live? Is it important to have a place to honor your ancestors, perhaps? Important to bring a natural object into your space or fresh flowers every week? Are there favorite objects that lift your heart and elevate your spirit every time you see them or hold them? Is there a favorite piece of poetry or a quote that turns your thoughts toward the sublime? Perhaps you have a small chalice that reminds you of the light of this community and the love at the heart of this free faith. Maybe even some tissues in case you need a place to cry. We have tissues tucked inside all of the pews in our sanctuary after all. All of these are potential elements in your sacred space. It has been this morning exactly six months since we started observing our safer at home guidelines. Six months of online community, masks and hand washing, constantly changing expectations, Six months of uprisings and movements for justice and change. Six months of reading headlines about political chaos and failures of leadership. And now heat and fires and smoke that remind us that climate change does not sleep during a pandemic either. If we are going to get through the next six months together, we need to attend to our spirits as much as any other part of our lives. These are extraordinarily hard times. All of the stresses that we carried with us before, all of the addictions and mental traps, all of the challenges to our well being are made worse by this moment we are living through. Building an altar or creating a sanctuary space won't make the problems of the world disappear, but it can add an element of resilience into your life. It can be one of the many ways you take care of your whole self during this time. And it is a way of holding space until we can get back to our shared sanctuary together. A kind of promise that you make to yourself that you won't neglect the need to grow your soul during this time, to feed that sense of wonder, to open up that sense of what is larger than yourself larger than your own apartment or living space or house, larger than your fears. A sacred space, a sanctuary space has an expansiveness to it, even if it is just a small corner in your room. This morning, I've asked Kier Zecker, one of our worship arts team members, to share with us a little bit about how she creates that sense of sanctuary in her home.
Good morning, everyone. Well, for now, I am mostly at home. In my pre-pandemic days, I had a regular pattern of transitions from one physical space to another. And in hindsight, I realized how much these entries into the next space um, I used as a pause, a shift, a time to take a breath and notice my surroundings. Off my morning bike ride, I'd step into the locker room at Los Banos Del Mar pool, and I'd smell the chlorine, hear the chattering laughter of the women and welcoming smiles, and I'd feel that connection. The Dudek office downtown, where I used to spend my working hours, the Korea Rec Center, where I used to play basketball, the AA meeting rooms, my yoga soup, and the Unitarian Society Sanctuary, these places all offered a transition from my internal state to pay attention and to make a shift. Well, now I spend most of my time at home where I am paying a lot more attention to my spaces and how I interact with them. So some of you know I'm a cartographer, so I made a map. Um, this is a map of my house and my yard and I wanted to share how I have made my sacred space here. So I start by noticing where I roam in my house, the places deeply grooved by my daily tracks. And I'm gonna call, color those purple on my map. Those are what I'd call cure corridors. And these are, I'm sure you have them too, those numerous tracks from the office to the kitchen from the office to the kitchen, <laughs> into my bedroom, out to the yard, the tools, the bike, and back. And then I want to look at the spaces that are not in those tracks. I want to choose a spot that I see often, but I don't trample over. And I colored those areas green on this map. Let's call these the calm spaces. And there's some of what Julia talked about can be a corner, um, that, that, uh, that high above where the normal traffic is. And like the green representing healthy air on the currently frightening air quality maps of the West Coast, these are the places that I wanna be breathing without worry. Um, when I find one of these green spaces, I find a surface and I clear it and I usually choose one or two things. It can be flowers. It can be words that mean something to me. Um, usually it's an object that I've found um, outside, but it's really anything that reminds me of the beauty, love, wonder, and balance of life on this amazing planet. Um, and then to, to make the areas a place I want to come and stop, uh, I'll put a seat or a chair, any sort of buffer space. I'll, I'll put a space where I can lay down my yoga mat. Um, in this picture, I put a chair and a, that's one of the indoor spots that gives me peace, even if I just catch a glimpse of it. And outside, I have a patio space where I've just got on either side of where I'll put my yoga mat, uh, a statue that gives me a lot of peace um, and heart rocks that I found and painted and the turtle um, to remind me to slow it down. I keep it simple because what I want is for this space to have a hook that pulls me off my busy path and speaks with a simple clarity. Please notice me. The clarity is an invitation, a reminder for me to pause, even for 15 seconds, even if I'm not getting down on my knees, I'm just seeing it. And I'm taking that deep breath in, gratitude for the gift of life. I take a breath out to soften, just for a moment, knowing I'm okay right now, and I can have a moment of peace. Maybe it will even whisper, please come stay for a while. 
And sometimes I will say yes, to roll out my mat and take the invitation to pause, to sit there, to soften, to let down my need to do and to feel my body move and stretch or just be and listen to the wonder of my heart beating even when I'm too busy to notice it, reminding me that I can feel the gratitude of love for everything when I pause and let go. I leave my sacred space with a cleared and eased mind, usually with a renewed focus to attend what matters next. Now I'm watching my sunflowers grow. I planted these at the beginning of the pandemic and the one behind me right now is just bloomed this week. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your sacred space with us here and for inviting us into your home so that we can experience uh, what you've created there. It's lovely and I hope uh, inspires us to look at our own spaces with some fresh eyes um, and a, a renewed sense of peace and wonder at what we can create for the sanctuaries in our lives. In every good story, I find that I identify with different parts of the story in different moments of my life. So in that story about the little stream longing for the sea that I shared this morning, I invite you to consider where do you find yourself in that story? Sometimes I have felt like the stream as it rushed and tumbled without knowing where it was going, right? Sometimes I identify with it in that moment where it finds itself stuck and fearful of change and kind of throwing itself in vain on the sands. But right now, I chose that story for this morning because I feel like we are the stream dispersed into the air, letting go of the shape and form that we knew that was comfortable, letting go so that we can become something that we must in order to survive and moving through our fear of the unknown. And we've done the letting go, that transformative moment that can be so hard. We've accomplished that, my beloved friends. We have let go and formed this new space, this cloud, this collection of water droplets, trusting the wind to carry us over the desert together. We are these droplets suspended and apart and holding that dream of the day when we will come back together as the river that we are. Each of us in our homes, trusting that the desert sands won't stretch beneath us forever. So our blessing of the waters, our gathering of the waters this morning takes on a different meaning. Instead of each of us pouring our water into a common bowl, Instead of letting the water of this community flow over our fingertips as one, we take on the responsibility of blessing the water where we are and letting go of our previous expectations of what we were so that we can become what we need to be right now. And remembering that although all of our drops might not be forming a single river at the moment, we are still moving together like a cloud in a different formation. So take a moment to see if you can really imagine us as this cloud, imagine each of us as these shining drops that are scattered across the sky, but retaining this identity nonetheless. In just a moment, we are going to take part in a blessing of the water, each from our own home. But there's a second part to our water ceremony today, right? I, I said at the beginning that this is really a, an in-gathering week rather than an in-gathering moment. So instead of just keeping some of this water in this bottle and using the rest to water the plants, and by the way, when services are over, I invite you to take the water and take it outside and let it sink into the earth rather than just pouring it down the drain. Instead of just pouring this water into the earth, after the service this morning, I am going to take this water and put it into a bunch of tiny little bottles that I've got here at home. And we're gonna do kind of a reverse gathering of the waters. We will be dispersing these waters 
instead. And so next Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m., I'm going to be out front of the Unitarian Society with members of our staff community, and we're going to do a drive-through water disbursement. You are all invited to drive by between 10 and 11 wearing masks and keeping physically distant and safe, of course, and pick up your little bottle of water for this year and take it home. And then I'm going to ask you to hold on to it. And next year, when we are gathering in our sanctuary for our in-gathering service in 2021, I'm going to ask you to bring that water back with you into the sanctuary and rejoin it into our common bowl once again. You're holding this water in trust, holding your place in this cloud, perhaps setting the water in your altar or sacred space that you have at home, perhaps just keeping it somewhere safe, letting it be a reminder that you carry the sustaining love of this community with you, even as we cross this desert together. So I'll be sending out a reminder with the details, but make some time to come by and say hello next Saturday and pick up this water. But right now I'd like to invite you to take that cup or bowl of water you have with you and go ahead and just dip your fingertips into it, right? Feel the coolness of the water against your skin, the realness of it. The physicality of the blessing of the waters is important. The water right here in front of us, it is real. It is something that connects us all in a particular experience. So no matter where we all right now, we are all having that same experience of water against our skin. Now, if you have an empty bowl handy, perhaps you could pour a little water over your hand, or if there's someone with you, they could pour a little water over your hands, and then you could return the favor and pour a little water over theirs. Or if you just have a bowl like this, go ahead and just kind of scoop up some of the water and let it run through your fingertips back into the cup, right? So just let that feeling, I don't know if you can hear it. I don't want to get it too on my computer, but just let it run through your fingers. And remember that renewal and change are always flowing through this community, always flowing through your hands. Each year we are offered this chance for renewal, and this year is no different. If you like, you can take your damp fingertips and press them to your cheeks or your forehead, letting yourself be blessed and refreshed by this fundamental source of life, the waters from which we were born and that sing in our blood our whole life long. I have here with me also the waters from our history. This is the bottle that I keep in my office that contains the waters from in-gatherings past. Every year after our in-gathering service, I strain the water and boil it to remove anything that could be harmful and keep it in this bottle. And so that we pour it in each September into our common bowl so that we remember we carry with us our past, our headwaters, even as we look toward the future. And this water, this water will be used not just to honor our past, but also in our child dedications as we carry our tradition forward into the future. And it will be distributed in this bowl to each and every one of you if you come pick up some of the water on Saturday. So now I invite you all to join me in a moment of blessing. Blessing for the water of our community and the water in the cup in front of you. We're gonna pull up the words to this blessing so you can read along at home if you like, or you can just let this prayer flow over you. Water created us. Water sustains us. Water unites us. Water outlives us. Spirit of life, mystery of the living waters, may we be worthy stewards of this gift. May we let rivers of compassion flow from our hearts 
and may waves of wisdom wash over us. We give thanks for the water that restores the thirsty earth, just as love restores the thirsty soul. And we bless this water, that generations to come may know the gift of this community and continue to overflow with love for the world. May it be so, blessed be, and amen. One of the ways we let the waters of this community flow out into the world is through our outreach offerings, sharing the resources we have with programs that help live our values and build a beloved community. And our outreach offering this month is partnering with the Academy for Success, which is a truly remarkable program in the high schools here in Santa Barbara that provides support for students who wouldn't get through high school without it. And particularly right now, these are some of the kids that need the community to circle around them and hold them and carry them through across this desert. So please support the work of the Academy for Success with our youth in this community and support the work of this congregation uh, as, as we live our values in the world. 
If you'd like to read with me the affirmation of gratitude and giving, the words are right here. And this is a point in time when you can unmute if you want to, and we can hear each other's voices, uh, even though they are asynchronous, each in our little droplets, um, sharing together this gratitude. Let us be grateful. Be grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Many do not have that gift of gifts. Let us be grateful for those who share their gifts with us. For we have been enriched by their giving. Let us be grateful. Let us be grateful. For our generosity, we learn from others. See here, you know. Let us be I love hearing your voices in that moment. So I promised you that we would get a chance to sing wherever you are. We won't be able to hear each other, but we can still sing together. And this morning, we're going to sing with Leah that song that we heard earlier in the service. We're going to sing along with a virtual choir, and the words will be up here. So I invite you to just, you know, sing your heart out. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're good at it or if you're just singing because you love it, or just let the music wash over you in this moment. Let us sing together, friends. Beloveds, we are coming to the end of our in-gathering service together, that time when we prepare to move from this space out into the world, into our time of community and coffee hour and fellowship. And so I invite you to take another breath once more, to rise in body and spirit, to put your hands over your heart if you like, or hold them open, however it is that you feel yourself, that one drop amongst many, that part of a larger love that holds through us, moves through us, and carries us across. And as you go out into this beautiful and heartbreaking world, may the light of love shine upon you, out from within you, be gracious unto you, and bring you peace. For this is the day we are given. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we have something wonderful to rejoice with as we end our service today. Our treble choir has recorded with Tony Ibarra, call out a blessing for us to end our service this morning with a cellist, Katie Mendenhall, lending her music to support uh, the beautiful voices in our treble chorale. And you can feel free to sing call out a blessing with them or just let them sing to you as we end our service.
thank you all for joining us this morning and we're going to move into our coffee hour our community hour maureen Clappy is going to take over uh, and help us gather and then break us into small groups where we can talk and get to know one each other better this is a good time to refill your cup of coffee or